This is Russell Dobular sitting in for Jimmy Dore. We got my man Keaton on the mic. And we got Mixmaster Kurt over there in the other chair. We are going to have a little fun here with the Mossad's best named agent, Shai Devadai. Uh, he arrived with his Zionist crew at Columbia and immediately attacked a Jew. Zionists are anti-Semites, the tweet says. This is from Suleiman Ahmed. You should follow him. He puts out a lot of good stuff. Okay, so this guy is an untenured associate professor of business <laughs> at, at, at Columbia University. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. He's he. I think he got a look at Shmuley, and somebody said, that has to be the most repulsive Zionist freak on the planet. And his response was, hold my Manischewitz. I think he said, uh, uh, tenure, here I come, is what he said. Uh, not really. They revoked his key card. As they we, did? Uh, as we will see. But let's, uh, let's see. They're anti-Semites? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's see. Well, he was, he was causing too much trouble because he's too fucking crazy. Oh, like the food e truck e guy. Even for them. All right. So let's see this. I want to have a conversation. You're not a Jew. You're a self dog. Sir, a couple who killed people like my father in the concentration camp. My father's family was wiped out because of people like you, you couple of me. All right. So, so this, this is inside baseball stuff for those of you who are not Jewish. So he's calling him a self-hating dog. That's self-explanatory. Uh, calling him a cap, capo. What he's saying is, you know, they had Jews inside the camps who would work with the Nazis. Yeah, George to Soros run the camp. as a boy. <laughs> he, he's, he's accusing them of being that. George Soros people, yeah. Yeah, that's like that's like the lowest. That, that's basically what for African-Americans calling someone an Uncle Thomas. Like yeah. for a Jew to say that to another Jew, that's like the lowest insult you could Give some again with self hating Jews in America. I, I don't think I've ever met another kind of Jew once. I've heard of Israelis not hating themselves. Every other <laughs> Jew that I've met had a whole Woody Allen. G he, 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 he. They all did that. I mean, not us. Uh, I I have direct footage of both you and Keaton doing Woody <laughs> Allen. Excuse me. I. I <laughs> well, you know, man. I mean, a lot of that. It, a lot of that is the way it's represented I, mm. in the media. Like, look. Yeah. I right. I, lo I I love The Godfather. I, I don't. I'm I'm not saying don't watch The Godfather. The Godfather is very anti-Semitic. Like, if you if Lansky? you look at if you well well both if you look at how they represent Bugsy Siegel as Mo Green. That's Bugsy? and if you, that's oh, supposed yeah, to be is. Bugsy Siegel. Now, Bugsy Siegel was a guy who was so fucking tough, Called they Bugsy. called him Bugsy because yeah. he could just bug out and kill you. Yeah. How's he represented in The Godfather? Michael, he was banging cocktail waitresses. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Right. Well, so they, 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 they <laughs> effeminize him in the movie and in real life. Who's it? I didn't even realize this until I looked into because I, I do or I used to do mob tours in New York. And oh, when I really? started to do look into the history of these people, yeah. I was like, oh, and then, you know, Hyman Roth in a in a film series about betrayal, about people stabbing each other in the back. Yeah. What, what does Frankie Five Angel say about him? Your father respected Hyman Roth. He did business with Hyman Roth, but he never trusted Hyman Roth. What is it about Hyman Roth that makes him so uniquely untrustworthy in a film series where everybody's whacking everybody well, you, and stabbing everybody? Well, you saw what he did back. to the main character, and I don't mean our savior; I mean Michael Corley. <laughs> <laughs> well, and again, that's a total distortion. Yeah, my, real my, life, they love Meyer Lansky. Lansky the was mob loves a, him to this day. Loved, loved him. Yeah. He was arguably Lucky Luciano's best friend. Nicky Scarfo loved him in Philly. So, so why is he represented yeah. that way? So, what you're saying. That's that's partly a media cliche. If you've heard of Murder Incorporated, yeah, of course. That, those were all Jewish okay, hitmen but Russ, that the Italians used to whack their enemies. Okay, who who ultimately approved of these portrayals in the movie? If we're gonna, <laughs> you let the end of the day, who was in charge of putting that out there? I, I mean, that's, to cover that, up for competent gangsters, they don't want that out there. See, the Italian uh, mob is well, dumb. Well, well, yeah. well, well. Actually, you're right, and yeah. since we've Editors, it's up to you if you want to take this out. But since we got into this digression. All right. So you know why James Cagney 
was the first real movie gangster no. was an Irish guy. Okay, so the Irish really started organized crime in New York because they got there first. Yeah. But then the Italians and the Jews became part of that mm -hmm. system. Um, by the time they started making gangster movies, the Irish were not really a major factor. No. They had kind of the assimilated cops. out of it. Well, the Irish went into uh, the Irish went into legal yeah, crime. Right. They went into politics. Right. Um, they moved the, up. The, exactly. The Italian, yeah. and they still worked with the gangsters, but from the house on the hill. So did the Jewish mob. The, the Italian later on. Yeah. The Italians and the Jews wound up moving into the gangsterism. So by the time they made gangster movies, right. Jews owned the studios. They were not going to let Jews be portrayed as gangsters out of fear of stimulating anti-Semitism. And the Italians controlled all the unions. Right. So you, they weren't going to make movies about Italian gangsters. Yeah. So the only people who didn't have the muscle to say anything about it were the Irish. That's why James Cagney was the first. Well, movie later gangster. the blacks took their place. As so, we know from so, rap. so little digression. <laughs> Getting back to this. That's not true. Be part of the Jewish tribe, you have the right to do so, but you are not the spokesperson of the Jewish people. These, all of them here, are the Jewish people. You should be ashamed of yourself for insinuating otherwise. If you want to stand against terrorism, you are welcome to stand there. It's not you're welcome to stand there. So All who's right. shaming who? Right so now? so it's not ninety five percent. Based on a recent Atlantic article, mourning for the golden age of uh, American Jewry, uh, they said eighty percent, and that sounds right to me. Uh, it's I'm not going to tell you it's half and half. Yeah, eighty percent of Jews. If you define Zionism as believing in the right of Israel to exist as a Jewish state meaning not as one state where everyone has equal rights, I didn't know what that but meant. as the apartheid state it is today, then yes, 80% you know, of I, Jews are Zionists. I had no idea that that's what that meant. I thought, and now I know why you always would hear about our Judeo-Christian values here, where you're like, you know, or the gay marriage, you can't have like Ben Shapiro's against that, like Dave Rubin couldn't go to his, or wouldn't go to yeah, Dave Rubin's wedding. Go to his wedding yeah. Because that might influence Israel, who gets to be in 1984 forever. So they don't even have fucking civil marriage there. I found that out from my ex. They don't have a oh, is that true? Yeah, they were protesting it before October 7th when they wanted to overthrow Bibi because a lot of this bullshit about support Israel is really heavy on support the Likud party somehow. That really in America, because I guess these people that are donors are go with that right, side of right, it. Right, right, right. So it gets all mashed together like you're supposed to, if you don't support Bibi, you hate Israel. I mean, it, it, so Shai David I is the one that's a Zionist and the other guy is not. Is that what, what this is? Yes, he's confronting a Jew who is protesting for Palestine. So yeah. that that's what that's what they always say to you. I get that sometimes from them. Yeah. I, I get the self hating Jew. My exper my experience with the Zionists, see, I, I'm not dealing with people like this, but Zionists who come at me, most Zionists know nothing about this. I know. They're they're just brainwashed from from childhood. They my, don't know shit dude. about it. You start hitting them with facts. In my, ex I mean, at least when I've down? debated them, they go away. Yeah. Because they, they literally don't know anything about They're the fucking subject. Pro Dude, my ex-girlfriend, who was heavy Zionist, but very secular, and she hated the Borough Park, where she lived by Fort Surrender in Borough Park, and those Jews there, because she had blonde hair that was out, they didn't, and would be walking the dogs, so they'd be flattened against the wall, because there's a woman with hair and a dog exposed. She uh -huh. hated them. Though She hated those Jews. Loves yeah. Israel. Knew nothing about any of those Bible stories. Her parents were Hebrew scholars at a college, uh -huh. hadn't taught her any of the religion at all. They taught her, marry a Jew. Well, I, well they didn't say in these words, but your pussy's a portal that makes soldiers for Israel. That's, uh -huh. that's what she was programmed as. That, that, but, was, that yeah. was actually, that was supposed to be the ninth season of Stargate. 
<laughs> and then Zack Snyder released it they as that new uh, Rebel Moon movie <laughs> with the space vagina. Okay, so uh, credit credit to uh, the Jewish people, Charlie Kirk here. Uh, Jewish Columbia University professor Shai Devadai had his car deactivated and he was unable to enter campus. Columbia University has officially sided with the pro Hamas occupiers. You know what, Charlie? Fuck your face. I I, I know you hear it a lot. Your face sucks. <laughs> it's too small for your head, but I mean it re- severely. All right, so let's see this. I have not just a civil right, a civil right as a Jewish person to be on campus. I have a right as a professor employed, employed by the university to be on campus. They deactivated my card. These are five lawsuits in happening, but we don't want to sue. We just want to be Jewish in public. Thank, thank you. Uh, I, I just want to thank him for tearing down stereotypes. <laughs> <laughs> this is at least five lawsuits. It's five lawsuits. I've got the cousin. My cousin Maury will be in touch. But notice well, now he's, saying, you know, he's getting a sense of, uh, you know, checkpoints are quite the bitch, aren't they? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sucks when you're trying to get somewhere and you have to go through a checkpoint and the people at the checkpoint bust your balls and don't let you through. It's a, it's like apartheid. I'm an Who would want to live uh, like that? Right. I'm paid on the side by a bag. See, they didn't send yeah. Michael Rappaport for this one. This is a That's no way to live your life. This is, this, is, this is the new West Bank world section of the Columbia campus. Yeah, that's <laughs> point number one. Point number two, forgive the callback to a previous segment, but keep in mind this is an assistant professor at the university. So for those of you who are on the fence about whether teachers and faculty should be armed with weapons, pay special attention to this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting to applaud an asthma thing while yeah. he's in the middle of talking about the <laughs> I am a professor at the university. All right, they're denying you entry. entry. That's not us. They're denying me entry. Yeah, I love this guy. He's so good. Wait, wait. Everybody, can I get this? What? What? I can't have. We can't have this blocking up here. Do the right thing and get this crowd back. Everybody, everybody. We are cooperating with the fucking New York cop. We can't have this blocking this up here. You got to you got to round it up. You got to move it down the street. Hey, take it down. Tell your story place. walking, buddy. Let's step back, step back. If Mr. Holloway, the COO, is willing to make a comment to the media, I would love that. Everybody just everybody move back. Please, lazy we got to move back. Yeah, no, that's, that's the that New York guy. thing to do is look, you can't stand in the same place for too long if there are too many of you, right? Wherever that's happening, they have to break it up. We need a walkway here. There's a exactly. sidewalk. Exactly. Exactly. You can't yeah. block the sidewalk. That's a big Don't thing. Don't block the York. sidewalk. Yeah. That's like half the cops' job is keeping sidewalks clear. Yeah, McDougal on yeah. a weekend outside the cellar that was Armageddon every weekend because of drunks. Okay. Oh yeah. Now this sounds probably brutal to listen, but the cops there, they're not there anymore doing that, so it's crazy over there now. But the cops there, when these drunks would be a problem, a cop would grab them by the neck and smack them on the wall a couple times and tell them to get out of here, which is the kind thing. So they're not going to the tombs. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, there's no paperwork, and the yeah. drunks don't feel it. And they go, you know, that's a, New York is like, I, you know, uh, I miss that drunks. town. Yeah, dealing with drunks is really comedian, waitress, cop. Your job is dealing with drunks. I, I, I mean, guy, I mean, really? That's that's why I never tended bar. I don't like drunks. I don't like dealing with drunks. Oh, it's brutal. I, I don't like the false intimacy. I don't like the way they get in your face. I don't like the way they uh, think you're the best friend. I don't like any of that. The shit. false intimacy of cocaine is less egregious than yes, the drunk. I hate that shit. Um, all right. So this is from Counterpunch. Columbia professor Shai Devadai's family tied to weapons oh, manufacturing. You don't say. I, I'm fucking, Get the fuck out of I'm here. fucking shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> After throwing a foot stamping tantrum earlier this morning, Shai Devadai, an untenured Columbia University business professor, was denied access to campus. A self-proclaimed Zionist, Devadai is an Israeli American who served in the IDF, quote, proud of it and has continually harassed Colombia's pro-Palestine activists, labeling them anti-Semitic pro-Hamas terrorists. I'm sure he was formidable in combat. Yeah. Yeah, he looks like he's from the muscle end of the family. He's, he, on, he works uh, for them doing this. That's what his job is for the IDF. Exactly. On se- Yeah, I mean, he might have. On several occasions, Hasbro is a big, uh, big thing for them. On several occasions, Dividai called for the National Guard 
to be brought in to brutalize pro-Palestine students. He's even gone so far as to characterize Columbia protesters as Hitler youth. Columbia Students for Justice in Palestine have started a petition to have him fired. There's a quote from him. You know, let's take off the gloves. Terrorism is an ideology. No, it isn't. They are openly supporting terror. No, they're not. They are terrorists. <laughs> These are not kids. These are adults. Well, legally. Legally. In their heads, they're kids. Uh, you there is problem. There is a laundry list of complaints lodged against Dividai, most recently by 15 Jewish students at Columbia who were arrested and suspended last week during their occupation protest demanding the school divest from Israel. In a Jewish Voice for Peace Instagram post, the students called out Devadai directly, writing, Furthermore, the disgraceful shy Devadai publicly called us Juden Rat Kapost. Okay, so that so yeah. that's a more elaborate form. <laughs> so the Nazis early on set up Jewish councils in the Jewish ghettos um, to basically run things that, like that that's what he's called <laughs> like, wait, like the plo or hamas did they set up a hamas to run the concentration camp would you say uh no they no they did not, no, they did not. <laughs> and told us we would be on the last train to auschwitz we do not feel safe with <laughs> this professor song? still teaching on campus having access to the jewish community spaces we cherish much less portraying himself as a valiant protector and spokesperson of Jews on campus while insulting our ancestors' memory. Almost every suspended Jewish student lost family members in the Holocaust. I, I, I mean, if you're, if you're an Ashkenazi Jew, the odds are almost zero that you do not have relatives who died in the Holocaust. Well, not just that. You know, Jehovah's Witnesses were in the Holocaust. In fact, when people go like they they think it didn't happen, like you don't have to take a Jew's word for it. There were other people there that saw the whole thing. <laughs> they, well, they were sure, literal well, well, sure. I mean, Russians. They performed experiments on Russians. Yeah, right. So uh, yeah. gypsies. So this is like all to fool people that don't know. Because I didn't realize till I moved out of where I grew up that people didn't know Jews in in a lot of places. Because they would first of all think I'm Jewish, because they can't distinguish vaguely ethnic features. Right, yeah, <laughs> that's true. What are you, some kind of Jew? <laughs> but uh, people, so they're playing on that ignorance because what was the base to support this genocide stuff? Christian Zionists, the rednecks that they started calling as bad as terrorists a few years ago. That was their base to protect. Right. That right. was the one that kept this going for them. They fucked them over. So now what do they got? They got to fight with other Jews. <laughs> David I comes from a long line of assholes. I love this writer. We should give him a job, Keaton. Uh, yeah, yeah. His father, Eli David I, is an Israeli business executive who served as general manager of ARC, which describes itself as a leading global advanced manufacturing service provider. In 2016, ARC won an award for an AR-15 component, and in 2010, scored a prize for an explosive device made for a Department of Defense application. ARC also oh. makes part for parts for MCX and MPX rifles, which are used by the Israeli military. As you probably guessed by his crybaby antics, Shai's parents are disgustingly rich. Eli and his wife Zohara Dividai sponsored the Dividai Arrhythmia Center in Tel Hashomer, Israel, where Benjamin Netanyahu was fitted for a pacemaker last year. I mean, how many evil things are they going to be a part of this family? Uh, <laughs> Helping Netanyahu survive? Did they make Dick Cheney's Darth Vader helmet? Uh, well, that's at the end, actually. <laughs> Interestingly, as Cholent lover <laughs> exposed on X... Eli Dividai has had a long business relationship with Alan Quasha, CEO of Quadrant Management, who also serves on the board of directors of ARC. Quasha is an interesting character, an international businessman and a billionaire venture capitalist. Quasha has been involved in everything from Harkin Energy, where George W. Bush was accused of insider trading as he sat on Harkin's board, to dealings with the Saudis, U.S. intelligence, and even the Clintons. Oh, my God. Quasha is also... It's a big club, and you ain't in it, baby. Quasha is also the founder of Quadrant Security Strategies, 
which makes equity investment in innovative and emerging private companies that support oh, U.S. national security. Yeah. To top it off, Shai Dividai's grandfather, Benny Dividai, a founder of El Al Airlines, was a notorious strike breaker. The apple doesn't fall far, as they say. Meanwhile, as Devadai claims it's unsafe for him on campus, Columbia faculty, including Jewish faculty members, walked out this afternoon in a massive show of solidarity with student protesters. Hey, come see us do a live show in El Paso, Texas, San Antonio, Denver, Colorado, Los Angeles, California, May 19th at the Zephyr Theater. That's a panel show with video. Ashland, Virginia, Athens, Georgia, Rutherford, New Jersey, Minneapolis, Ontario, California, Irvine, California. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets. (laughs) 